I think it's also really important to talk about how much healthier Ethan looks following all of this. Like, the weight off of his shoulder has to be immense. Like, he's looking good now. He looks so unhealthy during all of that drama. Like, the stress must have really been getting to him. Got you, this show. This show is, is on it. I have a question. How do they say it in Hollywood? They say it's on a indefinite hiatus. Yeah, that's <laughs> correct. <laughs> what, what, A.B.? Do we, do we have to take down his portrait in the hallway? Do you want to? No, I'm no. kidding. I love this song. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you can leave it up, but if it's... <laughs> totally if, if you want to remove it, A.B., if it makes you uncomfortable or something, let's just get rid of it. I'm willing to do more collabs, like, absolutely, for sure. But I feel like I need to do more collabs outside of the political space. I feel like there's some there's some fun to be had there. Become the new co-host of Leftovers. Oh, thank you for reminding me. I forgot that Leftovers is dead now. I guess we should react to that. Leftovers is officially over. This was uploaded about 10 days ago to the H3 Podcast Highlight Channel about why Leftovers has finally come to an end. And I think it's, like, pretty obvious why it came to an end. Because Hassan would not keep his community in check. Like, he... It's weird. Because Hassan had a lot to gain from being friendly with Ethan's community. Especially because Ethan is actually a significantly larger live streamer than Hassan. Like, Ethan on a slow day has, like, 37,000 viewers. Hassan's slowest days, he's at, like, 10k. Like, three times higher. But he couldn't just tell his mods, hey, stop calling my co-host a genocidal freak. He couldn't do it. It was like a point of pride to him to stand on the hill of free speech and let his community abuse his co-host. Yeah, he. I think that Hassan is just like a very egotistical person. It's just, it's unfortunate. But let's see what Ethan had to say. Here's the clip that's got everybody uh, buzzing. Here it is. People are saying rip leftovers. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, probably. Just to be honest. We could just call it leftovers. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> Le I, wouldn't that be f***ed up if I was like, leftovers is coming back. That is f***ed up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. We were, we, we, we were talking about the idea of making a cooking show. It is probably over, just to, I guess, you know, put it out there. I'm really sad that it's over because I think that Ethan was a really good influence on Hassan. I think that Hassan needed the pushback. I think that Hassan looks down on a lot of the leftist content creators around him and doesn't take into consideration what they have to say. And Ethan was in a position where he could break through to Hassan. But it turns out the opposite was not true. Hassan wasn't good for Ethan. People want to know. And again, I said this on the members, but I want to emphasize that it, me and Hassan are still friends, and this has nothing to do with Hassan, anything he's done, okay? It's just that I'm deciding for myself to uh, not, not <laughs> do that show anymore. I mean, you know what I mean? I know there's a lot of people upset, that like the show, and I'm glad, frankly. I'm hap I'm 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 sorry that it's that it's probably ending, but I do. I'm grateful that everyone that watched and enjoyed it. It was it's nice to see that people care care about it and are you know. But at the end of the day, I feel that you know. I need to be. I need to look after myself at a certain point, and spend the time my time doing something that. Uh, not spend my time doing something that is going to, you know, be a net negative for me. I think it's also really important to talk about how much healthier Ethan looks following all of this. Like, the weight off of his shoulder has to be immense. Like, he's looking good now. He looks so unhealthy during all of that drama. Like, the stress must have really been getting to him. You know, it's just, it's, it's my life. <laughs> you know, to a certain point, it's not, it wasn't, it stopped becoming a show to an extent, or at least just, you know, the very end of it. And, you know, it's my life. So 
I have to protect the sanctity of that. And uh, that's that's why I'm probably going to not do it anymore. Yeah, it sucks that we're going to miss the 2024 election. Maybe we'll come back for it. I don't know. I don't want I don't want to sp- sp- um set any expectations anywhere, you know what I mean? I want to keep it just uh, open for myself. Uh, but... I have a question. Go ahead. Is collabing with Hassan in the future off the table? Because I really want to hang out with Kaya again sometime. <laughs> no, of course it's not off the table. And that's a good question. Thank you. No, it's not off the table at all. You know what I mean? It's still the same as it was. It's just... Uh... Yeah, I wish... I don't, I don't want to loop it back into my own stuff, but the fact that Ethan was willing to call uh, Second Thought a scumfuck and a bad person, even though Hassan considers Second Thought a friend, I wish I wish Zan took a leaf from Ethan's book on how he dealt with this, like, follow, considering the stakes were significantly higher. Gotcha, the show's... The show's is on... I have a question. How do they say it in Hollywood? They say it's on a indefinite hiatus. Yeah, that's <laughs> correct. <laughs> what, what, A.B.? Do we, do we have to take down his portrait in the hallway? Do you want to? No, I'm no. kidding. I love this song. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you can leave it up, but if it's... <laughs> totally if, if you want to remove it, A.B., if it makes you uncomfortable or something, let's just get rid of it. <laughs> but I like it. I like it. <laughs> let's so let's see. Here, uh, Johnny says, I totally respect that you need to protect yourself, but know that there are those of us who love you and Asana will miss leftovers greatly. That's nice. I mean, that is nice uh, to hear. I didn't even realize that there was such a little kind of following. Because, I mean, it's the least popular show on the channel. Not by a lot. I mean, the views were really good for a political show, I think, uh, compared to Oh, yeah, yeah. No, leftovers was like the biggest, like, one of the biggest leftist political live streams anywhere. Like, it was very good. It was very good for views. I don't think the content was always top notch, but it was up there. Stuff. I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Really. It really. Consistently got like five hundred k to seven hundred k. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely the top, or, even the more tops. than that, I think at the end, it was getting like I think seven hundred about, which is great. I mean, it's great, but I I didn't realize so many people cared so much about it. Uh, to be honest, that surprised me. But I'm grateful. When we first decided to do a political show, I was really. <laughs> Not into the idea, but honestly, I'm I'm really gonna miss it. I Me really too. Good to love that show. <sighs> but I fully understand. This is so sad. Yeah. God, it sucks. There's nurse roping Let's do some chestnuts for her. Someone says do an election season special of leftovers. I mean, that's I like that idea. I'm not committing to it, just to be clear, because I want expectations right. You could go ahead with it, Zach. Keep it keep it running. But um, but that does I do like that idea. It does sound fun, you know. It'd be a lot for every week, but I don't hate it. Just enter the K hole with us. <laughs> in the in the K hole. Now deep incline. There was some conspiratorial takes that this was all applauded on by Dan and I think it was Ian who have been passionate about launching the Scooby-Doo, Mountain Dew-themed podcast. Is there any validity to that? I didn't want to bring it up, but, I mean, we have about 400 episodes planned. <laughs> 400, huh? That really got legs, that concept. Do the do. Even There's talk- a lot to cover. They've been talking about this show since I started working here. Okay, maybe maybe that's a good, maybe that would be nice, you know? I'm sure there's just, I'm sure people will be tuning in for, uh... I don't know why, you, you're such a hater, dude. You're such a hater. Is, is he gonna address any more of this in this clip? Oh, well, hold on. There was one more thing I wanted to say about the see you next, or the leftovers thing. Uh, Keemstar got in on it. Oh, motherfucking Keemstar. Keemstar. He had some expert commentary on it. He just wants that position. Does he hate... Does he hate Hassan more than me? What's going on here? Or maybe maybe Hassan hating is more right now it's kind of a hot thing. Yeah. It's like it's more in for, vogue. Yeah. I don't think if he's if he tweets about me, people will be like, dude, get over it, bro. <laughs> he said it all. Right. <laughs> right. I think I think Keemstar is just seething because he monumentally fell the fuck off, whereas Ethan Klein still has a massive platform. Like, he won't upload videos anymore because he's so embarrassed about his lack of views. 
he's kind of just like a relic of a bygone era you know like keemstar and leafy were like side by side and now leafy's banned from everything and keemstar is an old man yelling at clouds while it's like his fucking daughter is older than what his the average age of his viewer base used to be so this is his new yeah so here he says some piker over the last 30 days was kicked off his podcast is he talking about ours yeah that's not what happened that's not what happened bro Doesn't you matter. gotta leave it's keemstar bro you gotta leave i'm replacing you <laughs> got exposed for spreading fake news and getting mainstream news stories completely wrong hmm keemstar hmm. saying that he's Surely, yeah. surely there must be something to that. Yeah. Like, I'll just be real about Keemstar right now. If I acted like him at the age of 41, I would want to 41 myself. Yeah. Uh, lost a debate he begged for against drama YouTuber. Okay. I don't even know what that's in right Me neither. Defended Pokey. Oh, that's the worst crime. Oh, that. there you go. That's the slam dunk at the end. The I think he slam. wrote this about me, and then he's like, uh, let's change this song. <laughs> I don't think people are into the Ethan hate right now. Um, okay, well, there you go, Keemstar. You got your tweet out of it. Uh, congratulations. The moment Hassan saw Keem chatting during his stream was one of the funniest things I've seen live. Wait, what? I gotta see that. Hassan was chatting in his live? That's nuts. <laughs> I gotta know. I need the lore on that one. <laughs> was what? kicked off his podcast. What do you think? that you, I'm gonna hire you or something, Kim? You've been replaced with Keemstar. Keemstar is too Oh, bu Keemstar's too busy. <clears throat> Somebody said, this is exact tweet Keem wrote about Ethan after Friendly's broke up. That's my point. He could have subbed me in easily for that. <laughs> yeah. So there it is. Shout out. To okay. Um, okay. So first of all, trans anarchy CEO, if you said the joke in my chat once, which makes it my intellectual property, if you don't want me to steal your jokes, don't put them in my chat. There you go. Just, just letting you know, just saying the record straight. It was on Twitter. I own Twitter too, by the way. To the Kimi Dreamy, the, cre the Creamy Kimi Dreamy Award. That goes to him. Damn. Leftovers could have been something a lot bigger than it was, and I'm really sad that it's over. I hope that eventually that Hassan is able to have a co-host who has sensible political positions that he can actually collaborate with that doesn't just end up with his community tearing them apart. Like, it feels like this was just such a big example of what happens when you have a very large political echo chamber that is incapable of interacting in a positive way with people of different political views. Because it's not like Ethan and Hassan were, like, radically different. They were more close than they were far apart in their political views, yet these minute differences were too much. It's just a completely toxic community. Can't happen because Hassan will never reign in his community. Yeah. Well, the thing that actually kind of makes me sad is that, like, on the trajectory that Hassan is on, I don't think he's going to have the opportunities that made him blow up in the first place. Like, the days of Hassan having 100,000 viewers playing Among Us with AOC are over. It's not going to go back to that. You know, the next time, like, a big politician wants to collab with Hassan, they're going to be shown, like... How they how he's like, I believe in the one China policy or uh, defending Russia's actions in Ukraine or defending what Second Thoughts said about Israeli civilians getting massacred. It's just it's over. It's done. He had a chance and he fucked it. And it's sad. He, it's just it is severely disappointing because it stunted his ability to get his message out. He was like the first big leftist online personality who was able to have a very big impact in the world, in the real world, having all of these big name uh, politicians on his stream. And just like over time, as he like had more of these shitty takes and had more collabs with tankies, it just made him too sus. He had this weird issue he simultaneously wanted to be anti-establishment and he wanted to be 
a household establishment name. You can't have both of those things. So I hope that the decision was intentional and he didn't just get forced into this, but I don't think it was intentional. I think he ran up against the limitations of his brand. 